Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Jay Will here again at Veteran Nerd Review. Getting ready to give you guys another figure review on a figure two pack that I'm pretty excited about. It's the McFarlane two pack of Superman and Doomsday. If you guys don't know, this is a pretty big storyline back in the 90s. Like a really, really big storyline impacted a lot of different things across the DC universe as well as even the Marvel universe. There's a few uh, references here and there, but uh, definitely shook up the game, as they say, between the characters when they introduced this character of Doomsday and how he took down Superman and it was like a big old thing and then they brought him back after the uh, uh, army, the, what was it, the story of uh, all the Supermen came together or it was like an army of Supermen going against each other like the Eradicator and Steel and the clone and different Superman versions and iterations and everything it was like a really big deal back in the day so I'm glad to finally have the uh, figure representation of the two characters from that storyline in my hands here today and so let's go ahead and take these guys off the stand here slide that to the side and I gotta let you guys know the uh, raffle is still in effect for the deluxe cannon Iron Man proton cannon brand new sealed in the box so if you guys want a chance at winning that go ahead and hit up that cash up down in the description two dollars per ticket buy as many tickets as you want of course Send your name uh, and a code word that'll be going on your name ticket when I put it in the cage. That way I can confirm as you, and not somebody just uh, you know pretending to be you, and uh, so they can get their hands on your figure that you won rightfully. Moving right along, let's take a quick look at the packaging here. Got a big old McFarlane window packaging here at the front. Superman, 80th anniversary, 85th anniversary. Superman vs. Doomsday DC Multiverse. Got a really pretty backdrop back there in the packaging. For you guys that are interested in using that as a display piece or a diorama piece and everything, that's pretty cool. And of course you got your two stands right there in the back for the figures. Got Superman vs. Doomsday on one side. The gold label up there in the corner. Got some more window packaging. Window display right there on the side, Superman vs. Doomsday. Then of course you do get some artwork right there in the back. Doomsday, and of course Superman, the Death of Superman storyline with the uh, Superman cape draped on the stick right there on the ground. Kind of like a flag type of style. And then other than that, not much, not much else going on for the packaging, so let me go ahead and kick that to the side. And of course they do come with two trading cards, one for each character. We have the Superman and Doomsday ones. And it's a bit of a read on the back of them if you guys want to read it. Go ahead and pause it now. And now let's take a quick look at these figures and do some quick comparisons. Yeah. First up there, first up on the uh, stage, we have the Doomsday figure. Let me adjust my camera real quick. So you guys get a full scale kind of look at the guy. We have the McFarlane Bane figure that just came out recently. And we have Mongol. So you guys can get a pretty much a uh, taste of how tall he is or a good idea rather how he is compared to Mongol and Bane which makes sense of course because he's a little bit bigger of course bigger than Bane and maybe a little bit smaller than Mongol so that makes sense and then of course we have the figure that was the main I guess you could say inspiration behind him tooling this figure we have the Devastator figure and we have the Connect and Connect, well, Collect and Connect Doomsday figure that came out a little while ago, some years ago. Back in the day when they were doing the six inch DC figures, steel multiverse figures. So you guys can see how that looks together. Just to get one quick gripe out of the way, they did carry a lot of the stumpiness over from this uh, Devastator figure into the Doomsday figure that I'm kind of bummed out about. As far as the articulation goes, but not too big of a deal. He does capture the aesthetic, in my opinion, for what I would expect Doomsday to look like. But this one definitely wasn't a bad representation, so he's still going to go somewhere in my display. And of course, to go ahead and bring in the Superman, we have my current favorite Superman for my display. We have the Dark Knight Return Superman. 
And then of course we have the Superman that he comes in the pack with. The Death of Superman or Superman vs. Doomsday, two pack Superman. Soups. I do struggle to get him to stand a little bit, so but I'll get into that a little bit further later on. You see how that looks. And then of course we have the Rebirth Batman. I think these two scale the best together as far as uh, Batman and Superman scaling. Because, as I noticed from playing around these figures, or these characters, my Hush Batman is a little bit too tall to be beside the Superman. Even though I definitely like the design of this Batman the most, um, it's kind of a weird thing when you have Batman like way taller than Superman, so that kind of sucks. But there's a Hush Superman coming out later on down the line. Uh, I think these are, I've already pre-ordered them. But I'm pretty sure he's going to be pretty much the same size as this one. So I'm thinking Rebirth may be the Batman that goes on display with this Superman. Even though I think, eh, maybe. I think they're about close to the same height. Or maybe if I can get the Superman to stand up a little bit straighter, they might be about the same height. But yeah, Superman should generally, in my opinion, be like at least an inch taller than Batman. At least. That noise you heard a second ago was my Bane falling over. Can't let him fall over too much and break, because he's how he's worth so much now. Because everybody went crazy and bought all of them. And, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the accessories here. Superman comes with a set of interchangeable hands, one kind of like flying kind of leading hand, and kind of like another one for the uh, left side here. And the two hands he comes equipped with are kind of like grippy kind of hands. It would have made more sense of course if they included some fist hands or some fighting hands. To kind of give him like really in the, the spirit of being in a battle with Doomsday. It just like has a nice little grip going here and there but not too much complaining there. I think I may shoot, I may be able to find a Superman figure or just another figure in general with some fist hands that I can probably equip for that guy. Taking a closer look at these guys, starting with Doomsday here. He is a very large, very beefy kind of figure. A lot of detailing going all the way throughout. As you guys, as you guys know, or as I've mentioned before, he does utilize a lot of the same sculpting and body parts from the Devastator figure. A lot of inspiration from there. A lot of retooling, a lot of paint apps just changed here and there. But overall, I think he's a pretty good representation, as I mentioned before. I feel like he, uh, they definitely did need to blow him up a little bit, make him a lot taller. It being a doomsday figure, he's like pretty much a huge, very tall figure. But I'm just really impressed hold this guy in my hand. He's got a lot of weight to him, real beefy. One of the few gripes I have but as, I, as I get forward in the, uh, farther in the video is the uh, articulation uh, looseness. He's got some loose joints here and there, but it's not a big deal if you, I guess, know what you're doing. You just got to figure out how to balance him just the right way. But let's get down to the articulation here. The doomsday can look up about that far, down on that far, side to side turning get a good range of head wobble and tilt. He has this nice little soft plastic for the uh, ponytail up here. And for the, those of you guys that didn't know, yeah, Doomsday does have a ponytail, so you guys stop being mad about that. Originally he did, of course, have a ponytail, but like a lot of different variations, iterations of him show him sometimes without it. The newer ones, versions anyway, but he does have a ponytail. This one's kind of big though, My, that's the only gripe that I have with that. Kind of a big ponytail. He does have the McFarlane butterfly piece right there, kind of like flops out just a little bit every now and then on mine but as long as it doesn't pop the arm out not a big deal so you get rotation of course elbows and move, shoulders move out to the side that far down that far go all the way around you get a single joint bend in the elbow that bends about that far with rotation straighten it back out you get these big giant fists here that are on a uh, peg joint 
that rotates of course and you get up and down motion in the hands so unfortunately you don't get any back and forth kind of motion in the hand because of how they designed it here that's one of the points that I mentioned before about the articulation that they carried over from uh, Devastator that kind of was a little bit irritating but it does have a waist diaphragm joint up here at the top you get a lot of rotation a lot of pivot in there I saw someone on Facebook said that you can if you heat it up you can like pop the upper torso piece off because it has two uh, notches on the peg you can pop it up off the peg and they push it down on one notch and make him just a little bit taller just extend his waistline just a little bit but I don't think I want to do that I don't, I'm not an expert at popping joints and stuff like that apart so I don't want to risk uh, breaking anything so I'm just leave it like it is it feels as though he has a secondary diaphragm joint yeah he does he has a second diaphragm joint right there so you get a good range of uh, articulation and twisting right there in the waistline it has legs to kick out to the sides that far the front it gets kind of hindered because of the plastic and the, the soft plastic and the shorts right there to the back you get a good range of uh, thigh swivel upper hidden thigh right there you can kind of see it right there in the, in the joint and you get single joint knees that bend in that far straightens back out so not a whole lot of bend right there but you do get the uh, rotation right there at the uh, knee then you do get ankle pivot as well as up and down motion really strong ratchets in the feet which is good when a big figure like this or a big character like this to um, not fall over because of having loose ankles but the, this piece right here is pretty loose so but I think that's not a big deal for the most part like I said unfortunately you don't have any uh, toe articulation right there in the uh, toes but I think for these bigger figures they do tend to sacrifice a lot of articulation just to get the sculpting of the figures right it's like a big thing over at McFarlane or yeah for all in toy stores, DC side of things. They make the figure look spectacular, great sculpt work and everything, great overall look and appearance. But as far as articulation goes, when the figures get too big or get a lot bigger, they tend to um, sacrifice articulation. But overall, not a bad look. And he's pretty much just going to go on display, so can't grape too much about that. And now we get down to Soups, the man of the hour, the one that the story is all about. That's a nice looking artwork or painting and sculpting there got some uh, exposed skin right there from guessing from a uh, scratch against fighting doomsday more scratches throughout the paint or the suit there tattered cape with the holes throughout it a bit of a uh, black wash around the boots so I'm guessing that means he's like was well, stomping around through mud and running and flying again you know kicking up dirt or whatever and his boots got pretty dirty right there and then of course you get some scrapes, well, some bloody lip right there and a little scrape on his forehead right there. As far as uh, overall face damage goes. Not a bad looking sculpt. I'm very actually, I'm actually pretty impressed with the sculpt of this Superman. It's just that it's, you know, too short. You know guys, because for him being on the short side and not being able to uh, stand up to my Hush Batman. Of course my Hush Batman being my favorite Batman that I have for my displays kinda wish the Superman was a bit taller so I'm pretty much just gonna keep using the Dark Knight Returns Superman as my main Superman for my displays until they come up with like maybe a bigger Superman with this design or this sculpting kinda deal but nevertheless nice looking washed out the hair Kind of make it look a little, either a little bit dirty or maybe look a little bit grayed almost. As far as articulation goes, his head can look up that far, down that far, side to side turning, good range of hit, tilt, and pivoting. Shoulders move up to the sides that far, McFarlane butterfly joints. Go all the way around, bicep swivel, double joint elbows have been in that far, so very far. Wrist swivel, they're on our McFarlane ball joint right there, so you can rotate the hand and get different variations of articulation in the hand. You get a diaphragm joint, make that two or times two in the upper torso and lower torso or waistline. So you get a good range of crunch forward and back with the rotation. Legs to get up to the size that far, front, back, hidden upper thigh 
twitch right there so it's just a little bit you get double joint knees to bend in that far no boot cut or anything but you do get the uh, McFarlane ball joint in the ankles as well as up and down motion in the feet and toe articulation so you get a pretty good range I'm definitely impressed with the overall sculpt and build as I mentioned physique of this Superman he does capture a pretty decent physique for Superman but unfortunately like I say he's just a little bit too short he scales well with the doomsday that he comes with of course this height and size comparison definitely works very well for them but it's just uh, definitely gonna need a bigger Superman for my main Justice League display or shelf even though this is a tattered version I'm pretty much not gonna put a tattered damaged version of Superman on display as the leader or, in, or as a display in the, in the front of the Justice League for the Justice League shelf anyway so but yeah the uh, other Hush Superman is getting ready to come out that I have pre-ordered probably gonna be the same size so gonna need to find a bigger Superman or maybe just transfer the head of the other Hush Superman over onto my Dark Knight Returns Superman and make that my display piece I don't know you guys let me got you guys let me know what you think whatever in the comment section after the video and as always guys I appreciate y'all coming out checking out the video hit the like button comment subscribe please 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 uh, hit the uh, notification bell so that way you guys be looped in on any more videos I got coming down the pipeline share this video anywhere you guys find nerdy stuff and any, with anyone you think might be interested in winning this uh, deluxe Iron Man over here with the proton cannon it'll still be on I'm guessing a uh, raffle for quite a while for at least another couple of months or so a month or two maybe but so yeah let them guys let your friends and everything know about it and as always y'all stay safe out there later